Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on 15th of March of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. As you know, the previous day, right after Military Summary channel finished with the previous video, we got a very interesting piece of news that the Russians sue managed to shut down the United States drone. That uh, event took place about Black Sea, above the territory of Black Sea. And I believe that you, uh, all of you have already seen this video, so you, to you saw a lot of reports, a lot of discussions. I, I believe that everybody has its own opinion. Some of you are saying that the Russians made it um, took cor uh, correct decisions. Some of you are saying that they uh, shouldn't do this. Some of you are saying that the United States of America need to strike back. Some of you are saying that the Russians need to uh, develop and establish no-fly zone above the territory of Crimea or above the entire Black Sea. A lot of opinions, a lot of interesting uh, thoughts, ideas. And uh, tomorrow in the morning, I will create another separate video about the situation because this is not just about the Black Sea. This is not just about the United States drone and that they were using those drones to uh, to spy and to control the situation in Crimea and then the United States were providing this information to the Ukrainian military authorities. This is not about the fact that the Russians um, were forced to do this and uh, that was exactly that they needed to do these days. This is not just about this. And now, uh, just a few words about the next video. Uh, the situation above the Black Sea is completely connected with uh, at least four events in the past. This situation is like the it's like the fourth, at least the fourth event in a row of events, like the visit of Nancy Pelosi in Taiwan, the destroy of Nord Stream, the bal Chinese balloon balloons above the territory of the United States of America, and this situation with drone. It's completely the same parts uh, parts of the same picture so tomorrow in the morning we will see very interesting material about this situation now let's talk about the situation on the ground and today we receive a lot of very interesting updates so we are not going to follow the regular scheme of my videos so we'll start discussion right exactly from Bakhmut because there are a lot of updates I would like to uh, not to create a very long video I believe that we will maybe we'll make another separate for these purposes but for now let's talk about the thing that we have so let's update this map and let's take a look at the events that took place during the previous 12 hours. As you can see, there are a lot of very interesting updates, a lot of very interesting icons. The Russian source map hasn't been updated when talking about the situation on the ground. But as you can see, there are important icons on the north. There is a soldier with an arrow that um, f shows the uh, direction to the south. The Russians have almost established control over the northern part of this industrial zone. There are a lot of videos and this very important area. This is not just important area from perspective or that this is the um, heaviest fortification in, in the territory of Ukraine, on the territory of Bakhmut. The thing is that this is a symbol. This is exactly the area where Zelensky uh, took a flag from this area and after that he gave this flag to the President of the United States of America. So this is very important uh, area from perspective of symbol symbolism and so on. And of course this is another let's say, humiliation of uh, Zelensky and of his words and situation in uh, special military operation at all. Uh, furthermore, if we are talking about the South, the Russians managed to penetrate the Ukrainian defense orders near the uh, this uh, small uh, statue of, uh, of, uh, Su of Su-17 and the Russians established control over this territory. This area has the title of uh, squares, but quadrati, this block has the title of quadrati. And the main thing that the Russians want to do is to get as close as possible to the uh, Khromova. So they want to attack from the south and to move as close as possible to Khromova. And from north, the Russians are trying to establish control over Khromova. And so this is the operation to encircle uh, Bakhmut from the south and from the north. Furthermore, today we got a very interesting update that the Russians, as a result of their offensive operation in the direction of this small village on Khromova, established control over at least a part of this village. I believe that now there is a clearing operation clearing operation let's take a look at the western sources map uh, this map shows the 
let's call it uh, this map shows the border of uh, of a settlement so as you can see these gray dots is the border of the settlement and according to this piece of news that the, according to the russian sources map the russians established control over the northern part of this town and just the south part this one is under ukrainian control so this that's it this is that's it about Hromova. i don't think that the russians are going to uh, continue development of their offensive operation in this area because there is a at least a, like a like fortification area to the south and fortification area to the north and there is a railroad so but they did the main thing if you remember uh, during the uh, beginning of this year the ukrainians destroyed this bridge that connected uh, Hromova with the chas of yar later the ukrainians created pontoon bridge above this territory and they were able to use this area for rotation process for supplying and supporting and so on and now by the fact that the russians established control over the northern part of Hromova, we can say about physical control over this road so to tell the truth we can say about the real 100 percent cauldron because from now on let's update this map according to a piece of news we received today that the russians established control over uh, this small village Hromova. so let's update this area so as we understand this is the real picture in the vicinity and then on the west northern part of Bakhmut. so this is in this is already a cauldron because uh, i don't think that the russians are able to de deploy the their artillery system in Hromova. they will be destroyed immediately but i believe that they are able to establish their artillery system somewhere here mortars like light mortars infantry mortars and from this area they can establish control over the own only possible uh, passage that Ukrainians can use for rotation process supplying and supporting. Furthermore, today uh, finally we receive another piece of news that uh, the Ukrainian officers on the ground uh, start saying there was there was a video I believe so maybe you saw that video. They were saying that they can't fight in Bakhmut and they don't understand the real value, the real reason why they're still in Bakhmut. And the thing is that by the fact that the Russians managed to cut the supply roads, the Ukrainians are saying that we can see the Russians running russian right in front of us so let's say the ukrainians are sitting let's say in this industrial zone they can oh, uh, take a look in the windows at window in, in and through window and they see they're running russian right in front of their face and they can't do anything because they don't have shells and ammo and this is exactly the time uh, to tell the truth the day before yesterday maybe was a perfect time to start de the deblocking operation of Bakhmut. But when talking about today, this is, let's say, another waves of meat that the Ukrainians are tr going to send in this meat grinder. I understand the Ukrainians, they don't have any other options. The option, they have two options or to surrender and to surrender this 12,000 army. And if they surrender this 12,000 army, the soldiers will ask, would ask them, why did they stand there till this critical situation? Why didn't you order to step back before? This is the first option, to surrender. And the second option is to lose this army, but during clashes and battles on the ground. So anyway, the Ukrainians are going to lose this army, but two options, or to surrender, or to lose this army during clashes. In first case, they will lose the entire army and they will receive a lot of angry people in Ukraine uh, but uh, as, as a result of the second option uh, to lose this army during the deblockading operation during rot rotation process during the clashes on the ground maybe they will be able to would be able to reduce a little bit the Russian army as well I don't think that the ratio between these uh, Russian and Ukrainian losses are going to the same. There are 12,000 soldiers and I don't think that as a result of clash for Bakhmut the Russians are going to lose the same 12,000. I will be very surprised if the Russians are, would lose during the upcoming battle at least 4,000 or maybe 3,000. They will lose not a very big amount because the Ukrainians are completely without anything inside of this town. For, but there is a third option. Maybe this is um, a real media uh, speculation from the Ukrainian side that and the main goal, the Ukrainians are trying to force the Russians to make stupid decisions and to um, com continue offensive operation in the direction of Bakhmut. So this is about the Bakhmut itself. Now let's move to the north. As you know, as you know, today the Wagnerians reported that they established one hundred percent of the control over Zaliznyanske, and this information was confirmed by uh, by the Prigozhins, the head of Wag Wagnerians. And the thing is that, as we discussed. Uh, uh, there is a salient between the rivers in this area there is a towns bandarna and vesikovka and there are a lot of um, parts uh, the, uh, there are a lot of brig um, um, brig
brigades, not brigades, there are a lot of campaigns of mechanized uh, forces of Ukrainian army. There are, let's take a look at the deployment map and you will see that uh, when talking about this small salient, there, is, there are uh, four tanks brigade, there is a 17th tank brigade, there is a 30th mechanized brigade, there is a uh, 56 motorized brigade, so very powerful um, motorized um, parts of Ukrainian army that are already in some kind of operational encirclement. As we discussed, there is just one way how to evacuate from this area. I believe that Ukrainians do have possibilities to build Bantun bridges, but believe me, nobody is going to do this because of poor quality of the, of the ground, or if they're going to do this, not everybody can will be able to use these uh, passages to evacuate from this area. So the situation for the Ukrainians is critical, but the thing is that you need to understand one important thing. The Russians are not going to push immediately in this direction. They don't need this. And the reason is that if we take a look at the Institute of Study of War, as a result of that penetration operation between Dubovo, Vasilivka and Zaleznyanska, the Russians managed to establish control over the highest hill. This 241 meter uh, hill that located right along the road. This is the highest place in the vicinity of uh, Dubovo, Vasilivka and Zaleznyanska. From this, the Russians are not going to send artillery on this hill, of course, uh, it will be destroyed immediately. But the Russians will be able to establish their eyes and to navigate and target and correct their own artillery. Furthermore, if you take a look at this salient, uh, this small operational cauldron that Ukrainians appeared in their mechanized um, parts of their army, this area is located in lowland, so the lowest um, uh, area is 164 meters and the Russians is on 241. So 80 meters dif difference between the Russians position and the lowest position that located near Vasikovka, where the Russians stacked and could not um, uh, penetrate this area because of the Ukrainians managed to uh, bring a lot of forces and to stop the Russians near Saka Ivan City. And this, and this situation is gone. One week, maybe two weeks, I believe there, are not, there will be enough of one week and the Russians will reduce everything inside of this salient. Everything will be destroyed as a result of artillery attacks, as a result of attack from tanks from the hi hidden positions, as attack of soldiers with pots. So it's a small area where we can see another disaster. Uh, also, we understand that uh, because of the fact that the Russians control the highest hill, they control Arekhov Vasilivka as well. So I believe that this town is going to fall within the next few days as well. And the Russians, as we discussed in previous videos, as we uh, analyze, as we make conclusions, will take control over this Arekhov Vasilivka. And my projection. It might be completely speculation from my side. Of course, you might have completely different opinion about this. I don't think that the Russians are going to develop their offensive operation further in direction of Privilia. Maybe they will, but uh, maybe this is these towns is going to be some kind of uh, gray zone or something like this. The Russians made everything they need. Now there is a small um, area uh, between the Zaleznyanske, these lakes, uh, this uh, road and the channel that the Russians, I believe, are able to hold with artillery fire, with tanks, with mechanized forces and so on. And this is exactly the area that Ukrainians are going to use for their own counteroffensive operation to for the blocking process of Bakhmut. But the Russians' main goal, and this is my projection for the next months, I believe not months, for the next few weeks, that now, uh, as soon as the Russians are able to establish control over Areha Vasilivka, as soon as the Russians are able to clear Zaleznyanska and to get as close as possible their artillery system somewhere on this line between Dubovo, Vasilivka, Areha, Vasilivka and Zaleznyanska. So there are forest, forests in this area in this perfect position where the Russians are able to hide their howitzers. Yes, and from these positions, the Russians will establish, of course, control fire control over this bridge, as we discussed. The Russians will control this only um, road that goes to this small salient. And, of course, uh, the Russians from this bridgehead will try, it's my projection, uh, it's maybe complete speculation, can try to cross the channel and to establish control over Novomarkova and Markova over these two towns. I believe so. 
it's as I understand, I tried to, to calculate, tried to, to imagine the next step, and I understand that if the Russians want to take control over Grigoryevka and Bogdanovka, they need to start offensive operation, they need to cross, they need to establish bridgehead, they need to create more points of pressure, they need to show the Ukrainians that they have already crossed. While you're trying to keep Bakhmut, we have already cr crossed the channel, and now we are trying to make encirclement of Chasovya. This is going to be significant media victory, but the, there is one problem uh, there are and problem with supply and support of this bridgehead so the russians uh, i believe that they will start operation in direction of nova markova and markova at the same time when they are going to start operation in direction of grigorievka by taking these three settlements they will be able to create uh, this small bridgehead with stable supply roads because to supply and support um, Novo Markovo Markovo they can br build br uh, pontoon bridges but the most uh, um, val uh, the most like uh, uh, mm, important and the stable supply road is through the channels through the small bridge in direction of the along this forest line in direction of this area so this is the thing that the russians would try to develop during the while the ukrainians are uh, trying to keep back for, and nobody understand why the ukrainians are going to do this but they're going to do this of course i think they can so let's let let them do this meanwhile the russians will start encirclement process of chess of yard with bahmut together so this is going to be the situation according to my understanding. Furthermore, the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that during the previous 24 hours, as a result of storming operation, artillery attacks operation and aircraft attacks, the Ukrainians lost 160 soldiers, 8 armored vehicles, including 1 tank and 6 artillery systems, Akatsia, D-20, Grad, Uragan, M77 and M109 Hovitzers. So as you can see, the Russians managed to move their artillery systems closer to the, let's say, to the Areha of Vasilevka from these positions. They now they can control even uh, the outskirts, let's say, of Kramatorsk. It's just 23 kilometers, and the Russians do have artillery systems that can reach the outskirts and even more. It's Kramatorsk itself with artillery, with uh, shelling and bombing. So the situation for the Ukrainians is very critical. Another important update are coming from Liman front line. The Russians report uh, there are no changes on the ground, as you can see. N uh, the Russian sources map uh, doesn't show anything about any progress. They're just uh, regular icons in the vicinity of Terny. Polovka, Serebrianka forest and so on but the Russians are saying that as a result of clashes of storm operation storm operations of artillery attacks operation of aircraft attacks the Ukrainians lost 235 soldiers six armored vehicles and four artillery systems on Liman front line so as you can see the level of losses on Liman front line today is he heavier than the losses of Ukrainians on Donetsk front line uh, near Bakhmut. So, and furthermore, when talking about Donetsk front line, these losses of the 160 that I told you a minute ago, not just in the vicinity of Bakhmut, these numbers include the loss of Ukrainians in Avdiyevka. So, Avdiyevka and the losses of Ukrainians in Avdiyevka and, and in Bakhmut together, less than losses of Ukrainians near the salient, near the Kriminaya forest and near this Zhiribets river. So, just imagine yourself what kind of hell we can see these days in the vicinity of Liman. There are clashes that 100, maybe 10 times heavier than the uh, cl clashes inside Bakhmut. We just don't see this because the media um, uh, doesn't provide us. But today there was a very interesting article of soldiers who left this area and they told us that uh, the situation there is critical. The Russians are ruining and reducing the Ukrainian army as much as possible. Furthermore, I don't remember any update from the Ukrainian side when they were saying that they continue moving reserves in this direction. The Ukrainians lost and changed their focus completely from this area. Now they're completely focused on Bakhmut and Avdiyevka and so on. When talking about Avdiyevka, the Russians confirmed and many, many other maps. So I believe that almost every single map that now we can find in the open source confirmed that Krasnogorovka is under complete Russian control. So this Krasnogorovka, now this town is under the Russians. I believe that Vesola as well, Kamyanka will be taken as well within the next few days. Uh, this blue cloud or is in the gray zone or is under Russian control. Furthermore, as you can see, uh, it was like maybe the first day when the Russian, the Ukrainians reported that they managed to repulse the Russian attack in the vicinity of Novokalinova. There are very heavy clashes from Vadiana in direction of Toninka. As you can see, the Ukrainians are still there. They're 
are they are able to keep this brute chat we'll see for how long they're able to do this uh but also there are no more changes about this situation the, there were the Ukrainians report about uh, they managed to repulse attacks in the vicinity of Nova Mikhailovka, Pobeda, Marienka. So yes, they are able to repulse uh, those records and combos, those pushes, those pushes. Uh, the Ukrainians are saying that they are able to repulse, that they were able, uh, able to repulse until the day they lose control over this or that town. So this is the situation. Furthermore, now let's discuss about uh, another important area. And now we're going to talk about Zaporozhye. Uh, the Russian Ministry of Defense reported that as a result of clashes in the South Donetsk and Zaporozhye area, the Ukrainians lost 75 soldiers, seven armored vehicles and one artillery system, Akatsya. Uh, furthermore, the Ukrainians lost one uh, commandos group in the vicinity of Novodanilovka. But uh, as you can see, this commandos group was destroyed on the south of Arekhov, this area. And we received this piece of news uh, at somewhere at noon time uh, from the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation. And later this evening, uh, the we start receiving more and more updates that Ukrainians started some kind of greatest, uh, I don't know, um, raccoon combat operation in direction of Pologi. And of course, it's very interesting and some sources are saying that Ukrainians started their offensive operation. No, this is, it's not even, a, it's not, it wasn't even, that those attacks wasn't, weren't even a raccoon combat. Uh, I will try to explain to you. First of all, don't forget that uh, in the beginning, right before the Uglidar offensive operation, the Russians made another attempt to penetrate this area and the Russians made attempt to start offensive operation in this area. If you remember, the Russians reported that they established control over small town uh, Lapkovoya, this one. Uh, we, we remember we discussed the operation, the Russians were attacking Shirbaki, Male, Shirbaki, Novodanilovka, all these towns. So, and first we were saying that the Russians are starting the greatest offensive operation, but later we understood and most of the military experts confirmed that that wasn't offensive operation. That was operation to reduce the gray zone. So this is usual, regular situation when you know that your enemy is going to attack. So you have a trenches, you have prepared positions, and you know that in the months your enemy is going to start attack. So what can you do? First of all, you will try to reduce the distance between your trenches and the positions of your enemy, not like to attack him before he attacks you, no. To, it's like, like the first wave, so when the Ukrainian starts, first they will uh, fight with the uh, gray zone with the positions in the gray zone and it will give time to the for the russians and a few hours maybe half a day on the real positions to be prepared so that uh, at that moment w uh, during this year the russians were trying to reduce the gray zone and to establish control over these towns and now the ukrainians because they know that they will start their offensive operation this year because they promised to western countries they're trying to get as close as possible to the russian position because as soon as they start this offensive operation they also want to reduce the distance between their position and the russians so that was a real attack it wasn't fake but the main thing was that they were trying to reduce to uh, spot discover the minefields and so on so maybe there is a very high chances that the Ukrainians will start offensive operation in this area very, very soon. Further, a lot of sources are saying that the Ukrainians are moving significant number of forces in direction of Kherson. There were a lot of video and photo confirmation that when the Ukrainians were tr made some trainings to cross this river Dnipro to build pontoon bridges. Furthermore, don't forget, and we discussed one more time, let's update this map with the map months of this. You see how the Russians were attacking this area using artillery. They were reducing this area to ruins. This is the updates for a month. So imagine yourself the concentration of Russian fire. And the Russians were doing one important thing. They were trying to reduce and the chances from the Ukrainian side to start doing anything from this side. And I believe that the Russians managed to achieve significant success because now the Ukrainians are forced to move, move more artillery system, more tanks, more manpower in this area. And maybe not because they're planning to cross this river. Maybe because they understand maybe the Russians are going to do something. Remember, uh, almost every single day during this year, I was talking about Kherson and I was telling you that something important is going to happen because this picture of this significant fire and significant concentration of uh, of icons 
should mean something. It's not like a joke. It's a real situation. It's a real situation where the losses of the Ukrainians is higher than the losses of Ukrainians on Kupin's front line, where the Russians and Ukrainians at least have the common combat line in comparison with this area. Uh, the, Ukra the Russians are saying that as a result of clashes during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians lost 35 soldiers, 6 armored vehicles and 1 artillery system D-30. And the last the front line that we need to discuss is the Kupins. The Ukrainians lost 70 soldiers, 6 armored vehicles and 3 artillery systems as a result of Russian air art artillery attacks and aircraft attacks uh, above this front line. So this is the situation one more time. Very heavy clashes in Bakhmut. The Russians developed their northern bridgehead, and I believe they will try to cross the channel to take control over the Novomarkovo Markova. The Russians continue encirclement operation of Avdiivka. They establish control over Krasnogorovka. There are some problems in the direction of Tonnika Severna. No changes in the vicinity of Ugladar, but I believe that Ukrainians will use this bridgehead to attack Volnavaha at least as a some kind of additional strike to 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 change the russian focus there were some recon combos but to be more precise there were some uh, shorten of the gray zone operation between the parties and as we don't know the results i believe we will see them and something very big is going to happen on Kherson bridgehead Tomorrow in the morning uh, we will talk about the, the drone operation and how the Russians shut down and also we'll discuss another operation, so I will try to give you my own opinion. And that's it for today. Military Summer Channel reminds you to condemn any violence in Ukraine. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes. Join my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.